acting is kind of scary and you're, you have to operate whilst your head is attacking you, if you're me anyway. I never watch anything I'm in if I can possibly help it because I find it takes too long to recover and I have to go to work. I don't mind watching uh, if I do cartoons. For instance, I was, I was once required to be a squid man in a movie. I was an octopus guy and it was all uh, digitally um, achieved. So, uh, uh, and I was perfectly happy watching that because what are you going to say? My, you don't like my squid? Well then, you know, live with it because it's your problem. And also I had a very successful, uh, the, my squid was world class. My, my, my squid was an award winning squid because the hundred men and women who created my squid uh, the, the first thing the director said to them when he, they presented the squid was get your acceptance speech ready and they won an Oscar so I was in very good company. With the squid I had um, I was put into a pair of very sad computer pajamas uh, which had white bobbles velcroed all over them and I was then given a skull cap with a white bobble on the top and I was given 250, I think it was, white dots all over my face and then introduced to Johnny Depp. And if you ask me, are there any great challenges in my professional career? One of my, the greatest challenges was wandering about a very big American film set dressed in pajamas with white dots all over your face with crew members being kind enough but actually averting their eyes because they couldn't bring themselves to look at you because it was so sad, you know. And then you are shown a picture of the scariest thing on the ocean waves, which is the squid. Then they say action. That's, you know, not going to the airport and just saying, please let me go home is one of my uh, proudest achievements and I'm not even kidding. When I was younger, and in, you know, you'd be in digs up and down the country and hanging out in bars with actors, and it would get to that part of the conversation where actors discussed their process, I would go to the men's room or put the kettle on or just go quiet because my, my dreadful secret was that I didn't have a process, uh, and I still don't have a process, and I, and, it, uh, and I just never got around to having a process. The standard questions are, how much research did you do for this part? And I am old enough now and it's refreshing. When you're younger you have to lie, but when you're my age you're allowed to say, if you ask me the question how much research did I do for this part, the answer is absolutely none whatsoever. Because I work at a level of writing where anything I need to know, any of the information, usually is in the script. If there's something specific you go ask, but it's very rare. Um, and also they say, how did you get into character? Well, I'm also old enough to say that I've never knowingly been in character in my life. I've heard great things about it, but it's just outside of my experience. I don't actually know what they're talking about. I was approached in the street recently by a young woman who said that she'd seen me in a play and she very much enjoyed, very much enjoyed it. And I said, well, thank you. And she said, I'm trying to be an actor. And I said, how's that going? She said, well, I'm having a little trouble with my drama teacher. I said, what kind of trouble are you having with your drama teacher? She said, well, I'm having difficulty with the feelings. I said, the, the feelings? She said, like I would, you know, she said, you know, the, the feelings. Like I would know. You know. I said, well, you saw me in a play. She said, yeah, and you, and you, you thought it was good. She said, I thought it was absolutely mild. I said, well, I can absolutely guarantee you that I'm not feeling anything. I'm at work. Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit busy. I'm a bit pushed. I have to do, I have to achieve about 1500 things over a period of two and a half hours or whatever the play length might be. I have to make love to a woman, smoke cigarettes, reach the door handle, hit the door handle when that verbal cue comes because otherwise the lights all go funny. I have to, you know, get semi-naked and eat chili con carne. You know, I'm, I'm occupied. I can't be feeling stuff. You know, that I do in my own time. And you can't phone up on a wet Wednesday and say, do you know what? I'm not feeling it, so I don't think I'll come in today. People who teach uh, acting, they have to talk for a very long time, sometimes two years of talk, or sometimes three, and there isn't that much to say, um, and they start making it up. 
sometimes, or they'll concentrate on things that are undeniable. Like you can't say, I am feeling it. No, you're not. No, I can't. You know, you're not feeling it. I can't. You know, I'm sorry, but I just, you're not feeling you got, You've got to feel it. Yeah, I am. I think I'm feeling it. You know, it's all, it's completely unnecessary. The audience have no interest in what you might be feeling. You're supposed to give the appearance of feeling something like you did when you were a kid. It is an extension of what you did in the backyard when you played the bank robber and the other guy played the policeman. There are many myths and, um, and there, are, there are also PR myths and everybody's supposed to toe the line and, the, and it, like with everything else, the truth always works better. And I'm not saying that other people are lying, I'm saying that you know, people, you know, it's just, it's just my view. But um, there, I do think that sometimes uh, younger actors are manipulated in a certain way. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of control. And they are made to feel that there is something that's out of their range or out of their reach. There's nothing that's out of your range or out of your reach. Don't assume that you have to take off your clothes. Um, it's bullshit. There is no plot to which it's essential. Um, it's usually, uh, broadly speaking, um, by extension, it's a budgetary concern. From the, the producers like it. It's got very little to do with art, it's got nothing to do with art, and it has nothing to do with truth. I don't know if there is a secret to collaboration with other actors. I've never been asked this question before. It's a good question. Um, usually, it's if I think what is exciting is when you realize that your fellow actor is entirely prepared and that whatever preparation it has been required has taken place elsewhere. And then if everybody's prepared, then you can start to rock. There is a, the, another myth, and it's almost become a kind of way in which people demonstrate their status, which is not to know your lines. The myth is propped up with a particular piece of tosh, and the tosh is, if you learn your lines before going into a rehearsal situation, for instance, you will become imprisoned by intonations, and therefore that is a discour discourtesy to your fellow professionals. That's a complete and utter myth made up by people who didn't want to do their homework. That's it. But it's entered the language and it's become refined over the years. And it's now, you know, it's as if it's uncreative to know your lines or uncreative to have studied them in any great depth, that we are supposed to wait for lightning or the muse or something. Well, I operate without a muse and without lightning because I haven't got one and I haven't got any. Acting is pretty straightforward and it's not, you know, it's, and, and it's actions and you need to be sort of directed and told. I like, I do like being told what to do. When I worked first with Stephen Polyakov, my first job for him, as it were, the th first thing I was required to do was to tell George V, played by Tom Hollander, that the whole of the Russian side of his family had been slaughtered in a basement the previous day. That was my first day's work with Stephen Polyakov. And I did it, and he came over and he said, that was very, very good, don't wiggle your eyes about so much. And I rejoiced, because I know how to do that. He didn't come over and say, I think you should employ more secondary energy rather than primary energy, because, you know, and, when, and he, didn't, he didn't go into psych, psychiatric terminology, because then I'm lost. The early days of walking on sets, when no one knows who you are, you have no credits to kind of precede you, you you feel intimidated and you are inexperienced, which is fine, you know, you're supposed to be, obviously. Uh, those were the most challenging times. A young actor phoned me from his trailer and he was about to start a job, a film job. And it was a big job and he'd never really done a lot before. And, um, and he, it, they told him that he had 20 minutes before he was going onto the set for the first time, on the first day of the job. And between us, we decided that that's what you get paid for. You get paid for the 20 minutes in the trailer before you walk on the set. Lots of people think, I could probably be an actor. 
but they don't know about the 20 minutes in the trailer before you walk on, and that's the tough bit. Remember that no one knows what's going on in your head, and they never will. And I know that sounds stupid, but it's, it's a good thing to remember. And remember that you're supposed to be scared. That's the normal, healthy, natural reaction to the job that you're about to start. You know, to walk on to a, uh, a prof into a professional situation where there are lots and lots of people all under pressure with usually not enough money, everyone's exhausted, and to be at some point know that someone's going to say action and everyone's going to scrutinize you for a while, or at least you're, you will imagine that they are. Um, they don't know what's going on in your head. And if you're prepared, then you're in kind of shape. You know. Don't believe any reputations, no matter how many awards or public distinctions they've been given. Um, let them prove it to you. Um, you know, and treat them with courtesy, obviously. Treat everybody with courtesy. That's, that's a sign of great professionalism. And it's, uh, you know, that's anything other than that is unprofessional. Uh, Christopher Walken is someone who I, you know, I passionately admire. Everything he, every move he makes is poetic. Um, and Michael Gambon is, is my role model. Thank you, Michael. Um, and uh, Gene Hackman would be somebody I admire tremendously. And Isabelle Huppert, the great French actress, is someone who, if you're ever in doubt about, you know, that there's dignity in what you do, um, that there's some future in art, uh, check out anything that Isabelle Huppert has done. That will refresh your, uh, your enthusiasm.